Hey guys, it is Tyler here, back once again with another Assassin's Creed video. This time I want to talk about the Brotherhood system, and just how I think it should, would, could return in the future Assassin's Creed games, and I'd like to discuss how it could work, what could be added to it, and features and things like that, and really why I think it should return overall, so if people think... Maybe they weren't a fan of it, maybe they never played a game with it in there perhaps. So it just gives people a chance to kind of hear my thoughts on it, why exactly I want it in the game and things like that, but also what what could be added to it. So it's going to be a bit of fun, and why I also may or may not want it in like, let's say Empire is the next Assassin's Creed game. Why do I want it in there, or why do I not want it in that particular game? Because there are reasons for that. So what exactly is the Brotherhood system? For those who don't know, it's essentially a gameplay system where you, as the protagonist assassin, recruit your own assassin recruits, send them on missions, level them up, work with them, and you call on them for aid to add to gameplay missions to just kind of be a cool extra feature and raise them through the ranks of an assassin, upgrade them, and then eventually make them a master assassin where they just fuck everyone up as you play around. So it's a lot of fun. I've always thought it's such a great feature idea. It's never been perfect, but it's always been fun. I don't think it's ever been like shitty or anything. And it's been in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood Revelations and Assassin's Creed 3. And to some extent, you could look at the Rooks in Syndicate as a kind of uh, alternate way of doing it. But it's not really what I'd want at all. I really want it to be, you know, Assassins that you're training. So the first thing I want to address is why or why not do I want it in Empire? So let's use an example of this. One of my major points of Empire that I want from the game, if you look at my, again, top 10 things I want in Assassin's Creed Empire. Number one is a trilogy. I want a trilogy with our ancestor character protagonist. I want him to have his own game. And in a similar vein to Ezio's story, I don't think necessarily in their first game they need to be a good enough assassin to be recruiting. Perhaps in the second or third game, you bring back that feature where he's a master recruiting assassins. I don't see how that's a bad thing to copy the Ezio format in some sort of structure like that. It worked in, in Ezio's games in the first game. You know, he, he's all about himself. He's his own man. He's a bit of a lone wolf and he grows, matures. It added to Ezio's personal story whilst also a gameplay feature of, you know he's not all about himself anymore, he's matured, he's grown up, plus he's a leader now, he's not just a young, brash young guy, he's about growing the assassins, he's about something bigger than himself. It actually adds a maturity factor to our protagonist to let it happen later, where if it's too early, and I thought with Connor, I was just like, this guy's just joined the assassins, he's not really a master yet, and he's recruiting guys, like, sure, I get it, he only had one game, it just kind of felt a little more out of place than it did in the other games, but it, it's not that it didn't work, it's just it felt slightly more out of place necessarily than in, let's say, the Ezio games, where it's like, well, he's a master assassin and mentor of the Order. It makes sense that he's recruiting and training other assassins. So why should it return exactly? I think it's always been quite an addictive system. I found with Brotherhood and even friends that never really, and were just casual Assassin's Creed players, they told me their best part about playing games like Brotherhood was the Brotherhood system. They said, Brotherhood's my favorite. That's where you get assassins. I'm just addicted to recruiting guys. And, you know, you get this whole group of assassins and you can call on them in battles and missions and just fuck everyone up. It did make things a little easier. Easier, but it was a bit of an addictive system. I think it's great how much gameplay it takes up. It adds some depth and fun, not just to the gameplay, but I feel also for the story, because again, I talked about this briefly with Ezio's games, where it just added the maturity to his character. It could add the maturity to our assassin. Now, if our assassin in Empire only gets one game, then sure, put it in an Empire, why not? It's just a great gameplay feature. I want to see it come back. But if you're doing a trilogy with him, or even two games, wait till a later game. Maybe even wait till the third game, if you really want want to, but I do want to see it again, but I don't want to see it if this character or any character gets more than one game, I don't want to see it to come back like in their first game. It just doesn't fit as well when you're a young character, where you should be really focusing on that character, you should be about yourself in terms of the player playing as this guy, getting to know him, whereas once you know him, you get that he's a leader, maturing perhaps in their own way. So that's just, I think it adds to the story as well as being a fun gameplay feature. It just is that depth to it, as well as all the time you get to throw yourself into developing your own team. Now I want to talk about how I'd like to see it come back, because it's been a variety of ways. It's never been exactly the same in any of the games it's been featured in. Sure, it's been featured in three games. Now Brotherhood was very simple. You recruited assassins, male or female, and they wore 
the exact same robes, and you upgraded their weapons or armor up to level 10, and then they became full-fledged assassins, in which they got all the same robes as you, just without the armor sets on them and stuff. So it was very general, very generic, but it wasn't not fun. Like, you still got to have a lot of fun playing it. They added a bit more depth and revelations to it, where seven, I believe, of your assassins could become masters, because there were seven towers, and that each of your assassins you recruited, uh, one of them was... Once they became level 10 and were a full-fledged assassin, they were placed to defend a tower. And then, you know, you trained them up to level 15 where they were a master. And then you actually had individual missions attached to that tower to assassinate a Templar. It was just a cool storyline with it. So it added that element where you're really working with your assassins in actual missions about them, not just about you. Plus, they all had their own class, whether they were a heavy weaponry, uh, more into stealth, they were more into ranged weaponry, so there was some depth to that, way more than it was necessarily in Brotherhood. Then it came to Assassin's Creed 3, where it wasn't necessarily about recruiting these guys off the street and raising them up to level 10. Only six assassins, all individual looking characters, all with their individual personalities and backgrounds, and all with their own abilities. So there were set characters that had their set look, set abilities, and you raise them from level 1 to level 10. And they range from abilities from like disguises, from uh, this ranged attack from a distance. Like there was a variety of different abilities and they were all quite cool and quite useful also. So I liked that they added that element to it as well, where they were actually personalities, because that was something I wanted to see. Now, I think that there's a balance to all of those things. I think they're all great ways to do it, but I think you can almost find a middle ground. That's what I'd like to find in these future games. I think it's good to have less assassins, like six to eight. I like that in Revelations, you can only have seven masters. I thought 12 was too many. And if you sent your assassins like, and you made them go out to other cities and left them there, then you could get like heaps. So you get pretty much infinite numbers of assassins in Revelations. Then there was only six and three. I like that. You don't need too many. How many assassins can one guy train? How, you know, you're already a busy man. You've got your own missions to do. So I think that a small number would be best. And even being integrated into base building. Base building is something I'd like to see come back, like headquarters, like Monteregioni. And maybe as your assassins level up, that helps you get or unlock maybe blueprints to get more upgrades for your base, so the more you train your guys, they help you work on building your assassin headquarters, and the more you raise your assassins up, and the more you recruit assassins, it could add like an interior, like more, I don't know, uh, quarters for your assassins show up, so if you upgrade that section of your headquarters, you can then recruit more assassins, because they all need their own space, like a training room, like, I think you could add that depth, to it where there's a home base element to your assassins not necessarily having all these assassins you just have you know like i said a couple home base element there you go you've got this cool gameplay depth straight away let alone the depth you can do with training the assassins and their individual personalities i don't think they need to have personalities per se they don't need to have a story like they did in three i liked it glad i saw it don't quite need that again but I think you could take things like the real ability elements and the unique factor that 3 had. That was a really good feature of 3. That they were all individually cool because they were all unique gameplay features, not just personalities. So, in Revelations they had the classes, as I said. I'd like to see them add all of that in together. I want to be able to give them different robes. In Brotherhood, in the trailers, they actually had different looking robes. Then when Brotherhood came out, they all had the same robes. I didn't like that. I want to be able to differentiate my, like, six main guys. If I'm a training assassin, I want to call on them and be like, yeah, I know that one. That's this guy or that guy or this girl or that girl. Like, it should be unique to the player. I want to get this assassin and I give them this robe look. I think I'm going to make them a ranged weapon, so they're going to use a crossbow or bow and arrow or whatever. And I'm going to train them in that thing and I'm going to give them this ability to complement that class. So something, for example, if you want to take Assassin's Creed 3 elements, there was the ranged ability where you could, it was a sharpshooter ability, where you could call on it and it would send down bullets. In this case, it would send down arrows like Brotherhood and Revelations had. Now that could be set to your ranged weapon. Sure, that would be complementing it well. Maybe you want to mix and match. So you actually give this character with this class one ability that maybe doesn't quite fit to your mindset, but you can kind of just mix and match however you want. You can make it fit really well with their class and all that sort of stuff, so 
you'd be like, yeah, my guy who's a heavy weaponry, his ability is to come in and just do this or that. I want depth to the gameplay features. I don't think they need story depth. They need gameplay depth because that adds its own element to it. Let the player sometimes tell their own story to themselves as they're playing the games. Add their own element to their world. Make it unique to the player. That adds more story than any voice acting could from a character, in my opinion, for something that's a side feature. It's not a main feature. So let's not get it twisted like, this needs to be so deep and they all need to have stories and backgrounds. And like, no, this is a side gameplay element just to add to the game. So let the player make it unique to them so they could play it a million times and change it up every time they play it. It adds replay value to it also. Now the last thing I want to touch on was something because we talked about the Brotherhood System in the Kill Connor Club the last one and it was something I really wanted to get back to. Now something that James brought up that was very cool is we mentioned in Revelations they had individual missions for your assassins and I do like that where as you're training them to become a master, they need to assassinate a major Templar. I'd like to see that mission come back, but in a different way. And this is something that James actually brought up, so I want to credit him with this idea. It's not actually mine, which was that there's cool missions that are things like the Captain Kidd missions, let's say, in Assassin's Creed 3, where you go to outside locations and you have a mission. So you get to go to a mine ruin in 3, and Jamaica, this weird psychiatric ward. Like, those are cool missions to go see different environments around that time period. Now, I think you could do that, let's say, in ancient Egypt. Go to another small famous place. Just some, like, cool thing we know about historically that you'll, like, get to go see for whatever reason. Perhaps there's some Templar expedition in the ruins of Troy, and there's an assassin that needs to be killed. How about instead of us going to assassinate this target, and you could add in, like, Revelations did, it's maybe a multiplayer character. I don't know if they bring back multiplayer. So then... You go with your assassin. So instead of having your assassins do missions in your city, they actually have to go out and you get to go with them. So to become a master assassin or full-fledged assassin, like fully ranked, they need to assassinate a Templar and those missions can be outside the city. Go explore places. Templars don't just work in one city. You know, there's a whole element to them outside of that. We've been sending them on missions on their own as they go. This is supposed to be the hardest mission, right? That's why you have to go with them and you actually get to go out to a different city like you've been sending them. Since in all the other games, when you send your assassins out on missions to train them and get XP, they're leaving their city. They go in other places. You can't use them and call on them at that time. So why not in their last mission it'd be the same, but you have to go with them because it's an extra hard mission. It didn't make sense in Revelations. Hey, you're sending them out on difficult missions. Why is it more difficult to assassinate someone in their home? That didn't make as much sense to me that you had to help them at home and not outside of that. So that's the way I'd like to see it done. James and I talked about it a bit and it's just a cool way I think it could be done. So that's kind of the main stuff I wanted to talk about and touch on. I don't know if I want to see this in Empire, it really depends on how they do Empire, but I want to see this implemented at some point in future Assassin's Creed games because it can fit in any of them. It's Assassin's Creed, it's Assassin training, it works no matter what. It's obviously up to the developers whether they want to bring it back. That's how I'd like to see it done. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. What features did you like that I talked about? Is there anything I missed that maybe you'd like to have added in for your assassins? But I'd also wonder, what was the best way you thought assassins recruiting was done in games? Do you think Assassin's Creed Brotherhood had it best, Revelations, or 3 maybe did it the best with their individual personalities? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Be sure to like this video and subscribe, of course, if you're new, and stay updated on all things Assassin's Creed. So thank you guys, I'll see you later.